Hello out there, wherever you are. As for me, why well, I'm in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania, and I'm here to check out Fighter's Heaven. What is Fighter's Heaven? Fighter's Heaven was actually the training camp of Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time, the camp of the champ. Um, so, I don't, it's an interesting story of what occurred here. So, he actually was training in Miami Beach, um, a friend of his said, hey, why don't you train on our farm in Pennsylvania? He trained on a farm outdoors, and then his friend's family owned the property. And so he bought that property and turned it into like an 18-building campus. Of uh, but, like, but, you know, it makes it sound like it's like really ultra and modern. I mean, Ali at that point, you know, during like, you know, the 70s era, was one of the most famous people on the planet. Not just famous boxer on the planet, like one of the most famous people on the planet. So if you see these modest kind of buildings that he was living in and training in in Deer Lake, um, it's fascinating to see. Now, this is actually a free a museum. And as you can see by the hours, it's only open Saturdays and Sundays. This is Thursday. So big thank you to Mick um, who, you know, who opened this camp for me for me to check out um, on a Thursday, um, which is not the normal hours. Um, so let's go check out. Muhammad Ali's training camp at Fighters Heaven, Deer Lake, PA, and Tom was here. Hey, how do you like this? I'm Daddy's Rail, and you're watching Tom Was Here. Now, there's actually a fascinating story after, you know, this camp, uh, because he, he, Ali built this camp. He was kind of the architect of this camp. And he, you know, he trained here um, for his big fights um, from 1972 to 1981. And then after 81 um, through 20, I think it's like 16, uh, it fell into kind of disrepair. You know, it's something where he was, he was no longer here. Um, and then it ended up going on sale um, within those past few years. And it was actually bought by Mike Madden, which is John Madden's son. Um, and he put a lot of effort, um, he was a big boxing fan, and he put a ton of effort to repair these buildings, to get everything looking as close as possible to how it looked when Ali trained here. Um, obviously, not everything is like original, but there's some original things in here, and then some of them are replicated to make it look like the pictures that he took at Deer Lake. Um, so, you know, they, a, lot of, a lot of effort was put into this to attempt to rebuild this, to attempt to get this back to um, kind of as close as it could be conditioned. And not a lot of people know that this is actually here. Um, you know, you, you, you wouldn't think Ali, you know, a dude that, you know, like I said, he was training in Miami Beach. He was in, you know, one of the most notable figures of the 20th century, found this little town in Pennsylvania that he was going to train in. So it's fascinating um, to come out here, you know, and intend what's a, a free museum, basically a free museum, um, you know, to check out how Ali trained for some of his biggest fights, including like Thrilla in Manila. Um, I mean, like... It's fascinating that he came out here, you know, to this small little town in Pennsylvania to train for stuff. Um, so we're going to go explore some of the buildings, some of the surroundings, just to show, you know, kind of how the champ lived during his, <laughs> his training sessions. We're heading up here to the, uh, these were kind of like the guest um, rooms here. Because Muhammad Ali had many guests when he was actually touring in Deer Lake. From Dick Cavett to Jim Brown. Andy Warhol was up here. The Jackson 5. All types of <laughs> different people stayed in this. Um, all types of pe different people stayed in these cabins. Um, you know, it's, it's quite wild to think about. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Written by Drew Bundini Brown, friend and trainer, 63 to 87. Yeah, so it's it's really, really cool that not only did he train out here, but that he had invited guests that would come out here to kind of this very small town in Pennsylvania to check out. And stay here in these cabins. So, 
Muhammad Ali, three-time heavyweight champion of the world. 64, 74, 79. And this is like the main kind of like guest area here. But yeah, you can see kind of like, you know, kind of a return to nature type thing. You know what I mean? So the reasoning, and I can see now standing here, I get it. Um, the reasoning was when he was training in Miami, he didn't feel he was getting the proper training as there were too many distractions in Miami, being in a big city, of course. So coming to this small town was kind of like, you know, at that point, Ali could basically, you know, he could have stayed at the finest hotels or, you know, whatever he had to stay at. And he probably was in Miami Beach, but coming here, you know, building himself a campus kind of, but this modest cabin, modest surroundings that he, um, that he, uh, you know, kind of um, stayed here with, and you can actually smell, I'll tell you what he can smell, the fresh air. <laughs> and I get it, that's what I, like, the fresh air of, like, being in Pennsylvania. No, it's not like the mountains, but, you know, definitely off the beaten path. One of those things where you can read about it and you can investigate it, but actually seeing it, um, you know, with your own eyes, you can be like, okay, I get this. This makes sense. I, I understand why this, um, this would be the reason why he would choose this area here, because it's kind of like, like I said, it's, you're kind of isolated in this regard, um, where you can focus on training. There's not, you know, the same distractions as there would be in a Miami beach. It's really, really cool up here. That was a pretty cool video. I uh, don't, uh, you know, I wasn't fortunate enough to see like prime Ali. Like when I started growing up and Ali, you know, had already been like, you know, like as far as like the Parkinson's has kind of taken hold. And, you know, I can only see in, you know, videos like that of Ali, you know, with his prime senses being able to, you know, articulate his thoughts, articulate his, um, you know, beliefs and stuff. So that was, that was really cool. And, and to watch that video in obviously, you know, where he prayed and, and, you know, his religious beliefs. It was, that was really, really cool. You know, I was talking with Mick here and he was kind enough to open his doors for me. They're closed, but he was telling me, um, they just added this like a couple months ago. Um, which is cool. Like a Pennsylvania historical marker, three time world heavyweight boxing champ, Muhammad Ali built this deer lake training camp here in 1972 after training at a nearby mink farm. He purchased this land on remote Sculpt Hill to create the ideal training camp, calling it Fighter's Heaven. He trained here through 1980 through some of his most legendary victories, including Rumble in the Jungle with George Foreman and Thrilla in Manila with his greatest rival, Joe Frazier. Very cool. Now, Ali brought these rocks in, um, and he, his dad actually painted the names on these rocks. And these rocks were symbolized... Um, boxers and people that he actually, you know, admired um, and wanted to memorialize them at his training camp. The first one right off the road here is Sonny Liston. And they, the cool thing is they add like a historical marker for each rock. Um, and a lot of those people, a lot of the people that are on the rocks, he fought and the ones he didn't fight were ones that he admired. Liston's pro fight records, 50 wins, four losses, 39 wins by KO, Sonny Liston. The other one here on the other side of the road is Jack Dempsey. Now, Jack Dempsey, you know, Ali did not fight um, in his career. Um, Jack Dempsey, 1895. He was a world heavyweight champ from 1919 to 1926. Um, record was 54 wins, six losses, nine draws, 44 wins by KO. Now this here is actually the family cabin. This is the cabin where his family stayed while he was training here. And um, we're going to check it out and see him. Um, like I said, efforts were made to, you know, it's like I said, to kind of revitalize this. And so they kept it as, like, close as possible to it. But obviously upgrades had to be made. You know, it's something that, uh, you know, they... Um, so they put a lot of effort into, um, but yeah, they got the upstairs. I'm assuming with the thing there that the upstairs is off limits. I'm not going to test that. It's just different, um, pictures, pictures of Ali and his family outside the cabin there. 
They have an enlarged copy of a handwritten poem by Muhammad Ali that was found at the Deer Lake training camp. And it's basically telling like his origin story about how someone stole his bike and that, you know, he asked a police officer and the police officer happened to be like a boxing trainer. And then, you know, I'm hovering over this thing so you can kind of pause it and, you know, read if you would like to. Um, but basically it's just the idea of how this police officer said, hey, take out your aggression in the boxing ring. And he did. And as, <laughs> as you can tell, kind of the rest is, uh, is history there. And all donations, you know, if you come here to this free museum and you want to donate, they go to the Michael J. Fox um, Parkinson's uh, Foundation and the Muhammad Ali uh, Foundation as well. So that's really, really cool. Really, really nice that they donate kind of all proceeds. All proceeds of merchandise they sell, um, all donations go to those foundations, which is awesome. I love the video packages that they have put. You know, I've only watched two of them so far, but the ones they have put in every room is just absolutely incredible. And Ali was a great ambassador for, you know, the race relations that we have in America. Pictures of Ali kind of later in life, um, honorary degree in, from Allentown, Tim at the Farm in Michigan, Liberty Medal Philadelphia 2012, Angelo Dundee Funeral in 2012, the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Ali Center Grand Opening in 2005, Fifth Street Gym Reopening Miami Beach 2010, Ali Center Grand Opening in 2005, Michigan 2004, Muhammad Ali Center 2007, Ali Center Grand Opening 2005, Tim Muhammad Ali Center 2007, and the honorary degree from Allentown in 2009. So, very cool. And then, there's different ring magazines that had Ali on the cover. Yeah, I, I really love what they've done with this. Um, said it is a awesome tribute to Ali um here like I said they they've just the the recreation of what they put together is absolutely incredible not every rock is actually a boxer um this is the Ali to Bernie 1973 and the story behind here is that Bernie Pollock he owned a mink farm and was involved in the fight game he was promoting and managing boxers and had an outdoor ring at the farm where boxers were trained. He invited Ali to train on the farm and Ali accepted his offer. After having storms interrupt the training, Ali decided to build a permanent training camp nearby on six acres of land purchased through Bernie. That led to the creation of Fighters Heaven through Ali's vision and friendship with Bernie Pollock. So, like I said, not everything is a fighter, but Bernie Pollock and him inviting Ali out was the reason why this place exists. I got a basketball hoop here. I got a little street sign on there. It says Ollie Camp 72 to 97. And there are other um, notable names on these rocks, like Joe Frazier. Oh, Joe Frazier. Um, yeah, Joe Frazier. Um, and, you know, the, the funny thing is that, that you would think because of all the trash talk, that he that on Joe Frazier that you know he wouldn't be here but he admired Joe Frazier you know he, 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 these are you know frocks for people that he admired so you know it, it, as much as you can say like he just completely like trash talked Joe Frazier Joe Frazier is memorialized on this rock and all he put it there so um that's very very cool 32 wins four losses one draw 27 wins by knockout Three fights with Ali are legendary. He beat Ali in his first match, dubbed Fight of the Century at Madison Square Garden in 1971, the first person to defeat Ali. Yeah, so undisputed heavyweight champ from 70 to 73. Won the Olympic gold medal in Japan. So Joe Frazier, there he is. Um, other ones here. And you can see some of the... Uh, I assume this is the original paint on some of these, but yeah, some of these have kind of went through some of yeah, this rock kind of, you know, through weather, I'm sure got through. Uh, Jerry Corey, 
So yeah, there's a lot of names like memorialized on here. Um, most famous bouts were against Floyd Patterson, Jimmy Ellis, Joe Frazier, and Ken Norton. He fought Muhammad Ali two times, losing both. To his disadvantage, he had tended to cut easily, but was counted out in one fight. 53 wins, 9 losses, 4 draws, 32 wins by knockout. There's Gene Tooney. Tunney? Gene Tunney. Gene Tunney. World heavyweight title from 1926 to 1928. Defeated Jack Dempsey twice. He retired undefeated as a heavyweight. 65 wins, one loss, one draw, 48 wins by knockout. Wow. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And those are the trainers for Muhammad Ali. On the rock here. And you see there's quite a few rocks. But Joe Lewis... And Joe Lewis recognized as one of the greatest heavyweights. The Brown Bomber reigned as world heavyweight champion from 37 to 49. Competed in 26 championship fights. 1938, during the build-up to World War II, he faced Nazi Germany's Zach Smelling before a crowd of 70,000 at Yankee Stadium, as well as a worldwide radio audience. He knocked out Schilling in the first round, elevating him to a national hero. Professional record, 66 wins, 3 losses, 52 wins by knockout. Joe Lewis. As stated, not everybody was a boxer. This is Angelo Dundee, who's the, considered one of the greatest trainers, cornermen in boxing. He's a cornerman for almost all Ali fights. There's only two he wasn't. Cornerman for most of the Sugar Ray Leonard's career. He also trained with Foreman when he had the World Heavyweight title against Michael Moore in 94. I watched that fight. Becoming the oldest heavyweight champ at 45. He trained 15 world champions. That's really cool. And Rocky Marciano, most popular heavyweight champs in history, died tragically in a I don't know if I knew that. He died tragically in a plane crash in 1969, the day before his 46th birthday. His record was 49 wins, no losses, 43 by knockout. Rock Marciano, you got Archie Moore. I'm just gonna kind of go through. This is pretty crazy. Okay, Archie Moore. He's the only man to have faced both Muhammad Ali and Rocky Marciano. He fought an incredible 219 fights in his career. 186 wins, 23 losses, and 10 draws. 132 wins by knockout. That's wild. Like, usually when you see boxing careers like, you know, Sonny Liston up there, thing, you know, they're like 50 fights maybe max. Dude fought 219. <laughs> That's cool. You got Rocky Graziano, middleweight boxer. Now he's 67 wins, 10 losses, 6 draws, 52 wins by knockout. Greatest knockout artist in boxing history. You got Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Robinson. Once again, another one, just 173 wins, 19 losses, 6 draws, 108 wins by KO. That's crazy. So many. And Willie Pep. He fought an incredible 241 fights, a record of 229, 11, and 1. 65 wins by knockout. Wow. Yeah, like just the rocks that, um, you know, there's just so many. Kid Gavilan. 107 wins, 30 losses, 6 draws, 28 wins by knockout. Welterweight champ, 1951. Successfully defended it 7 times. Got Floyd Patterson here. See, that's more of a standard record, but even so. 55 wins, 8 losses, 1 draw, 40 wins by knockout. Youngest world heavyweight champion in history at the time, in 1956. There's Jack Johnson, first African-American heavyweight champ in 1908, defeating Tommy Burns. July 4th, in front of 20,000 people in an outdoor ring in Reno, Johnson defeated ex-champ Jim Jeff James Jeffries in what was called the fight of the century. There's quite a few fight of the century. 
He was a flamboyant and controversial figure in the early 20th century. Ali often said he was influenced by Johnson's pro record, 74 wins, 13 losses, 10 draws, 40 wins by knockout. And the cool thing about this particular one is the Jack Johnson rock is coal. That's a coal rock. And the last one here is Jersey Joe Walcott. Some of these guys, like I've not heard of Jersey Joe. Um, let's see, in 1951, Walker won the World Heavyweight title in his third rematch with Ezra Charles, becoming the oldest to hold that title at age 37 until the era of George Foreman. Lost the title to Rocky Marciano in 52. Pro record, 53 wins, 18 losses, one draw. 33 wins by knockout. Yeah, it's so cool that, you know, he kind of put these rocks up here to kind of memorialize figures that, you know, either he just greatly admired or drew influence from. That's awesome. We got this cool outdoor fireplace here. And then here's kind of the three main buildings of Fighters Heaven. This is Ali's training gym. This is the kitchen. And this was actually the cabin where he stayed. So we're going to check those out right now. While Muhammad Ali training this gym, his workouts were always open to the public for free. In that spirit, there is no charge to tour the camp. Yet Muhammad was also fond of saying once he retired from boxing, he wanted to use his fame and notoriety to help those less fortunate and make the world a better place. In that spirit, if you enjoyed your visit and found it educational, we'd urge you to consider a donation from one of our partner charities. Very cool. Oh, that's cool. They have checks that they made to the different partner charities here. That's awesome. Oh, wow. The most recent people to visit were from Germany. Put my name on the list here. I'm more at home with my long cabins than I am my house in Cherry Hill. Showing the different uh, pictures of him actually at the camp here. Him sitting on the log pile that's out there. That's really cool. So I'm in front of that sign I was just in front of. Him with the Beatles. But is that, wait, is that, is that here? Is that him with the Beatles here, though? I mean, the rest of these pictures are from this camp. So were the Beatles here? That's kind of awesome. <laughs> that's weird. That's interesting. That's him in front of that fireplace I was just in front of. That's awesome. Fight is won or lost far away from witnesses behind the lines in the gym and out there on the road long before I dance under those lights. So I'm standing on the Joe Lewis rock on the road. I got this video playing in case you were wondering what that thing was uh, back there. I'm walking through the camp. So John Madden. It's him in the gym with people watching. The trainer outside. Mike Tyson. Ollie with Sugar Ray Robinson. And with business manager Gene Kilroy. It's really cool. Yeah, there's that picture again of him in front of the mosque. Out there. Fighting, that's Foreman. And then him with that Joe Lewis rock, the picture I saw that I was trying to <laughs> replicate. <laughs> hating people because of their color is wrong. It doesn't matter which color does the hating. It's just plain wrong. Agreed, sir. 100%. If you treated Ali right, he'd treat you right. If you didn't treat him right, he'd still treat you right. That's just one of the reasons why people love Ali. Larry Holmes. And this is just people over the years, kind of a mix of uh, Ali and Elvis there. There's the ant in the kitchen. Ali training in the gym. Reading Ring Magazine. Oh, that's one with, is that Tyson on the cover? That's cool. 
Not sure who that is, but looks like it's signed. Is that, not sure who that is. For like a press conference, I'm sitting on bed with, I guess, fan mail. Kilroy's Corner. The majority of these photos on display here were made available from the private collection of Ollie's longtime friend and businessman, Eugene Kilroy, a native of Skullkill County. It was Kilroy who first brought Ollie to Deer Lake to train at the Mink Farm of Bernie Pollock. Without Gene's kindness, support, and generosity, the current restoration of Fighters Heaven would not have been possible. Yeah, some of these pictures are great. Him hitting the heavy bag over there. It looks like a dual signed. I don't know if I assume that's like a print of like both of them, but that's cool. I'll leave with Jackie Robinson. I'll leave lighting the torch. The Atlanta Games. Oh, that's him and Joe Frazier by the rock. <laughs> Always bring out the best in men I fight, but Joe Frazier, tell the world right now, brings out the best in me. I gotta tell you, that's one hell of a man, and God bless him. Yeah, so even though, you know, he he really trashed on Joe Frazier, like I said, there was an admiration there, which is... Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. It's a classic Ollie right there. That's a cool photo. Man who views this world the same at 50 as he did at 20 has wasted 30 years of his life. Words, words, words to live by, I would say. Lee training. So with the speed bag there. I think it's this window. Yeah, so the speed bag was probably right there. Yeah, if you, you can frame it up, actually. That's kind of cool. So this picture of him hitting the speed bag. The speed bag's right where that giant image of Ali is. And then him peering through the window at one of the sparring partners hitting the speed bag. That's cool. Oh, a lot of Ali fight posters. Spinks versus Ali. And Cassius Clay versus Ernie Terrell. I'm gonna leave the big fight. Ali versus Ken Norton. Got Ali versus Ellis. There's Oh, there's a lot of cool ones here. I think it could be like reproductions of such a thing, but it's still awesome to see. And then there's the young Ollie picture and the prime Ollie picture. <laughs> Life magazines there. Yeah, these posters are really, really cool. I don't know if that's the actual... I wouldn't assume that's the actual heavy bag. That's probably, like, one they just put there. But that's cool, though, that they have it. No, I did ask if anything was off limits. He didn't say anything was. So I think I'm gonna step foot in the ring. Now, this ring does look too modern for it to be like the original ring. I guess it's the new ring that was created. But anywho, I'm stepping in. This is really cool. Listen, I heard Howard Cosell's voice and I was standing in a boxing ring and I got all hyped up. <laughs> this is really cool to just be in the ring here. And uh, I like they got the buckets here. They got the stools for each one. That's very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. I said to just be here in the ring. 
Um, yeah. Go through the ropes. Yeah, man. This is... As a free museum, this is amazing. It's worth your time if you're in the area. <laughs> the Howard Cosell the thing's a nice touch. Right off the gym here is Ollie's training room. Kind of show different pictures of him in here with that Ollie robe hanging up. Boxing gloves. I love the shirt. It's like modest, but I would wear that shirt. I don't know if this is actual, I mean, this stuff is pretty worn. I assume this is just stuff that was in the gym here. I could be wrong, but it looks to be mostly like original stuff. Like it's, you know, been through some stuff. Can I recreate this image? I'm trying to recreate as many images as I can. Yeah, only right by this window. Tried to recreate it as best I could. I got the phone there. It's like his couch where he was. Oh, they got different ring pads and stuff in here. There's a scale that I definitely shouldn't step on. <laughs> There's Ali sitting on the sitting on that couch right there. For another training pictures. Really cool. All right, now we're gonna step into the kitchen here. And I believe he said this was the, was it the original table. They have different pictures. And this was his aunt's kitchen. And this was his aunt's rules. My personal favorites are number four. What goes in stews and soups is nobody's damn business. And number five, if you must stick your finger in something, stick it in the garbage disposal. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, they recreated those, but they were here. Um, as there are pictures of... Um, you know, it's just a book of all types of different pictures from all these time here. Let's see if they have any that are actually, uh, yeah, look, it's a picture from the top of this building I'm standing in, the Joe Lewis rock. Yes. Yeah, here. There's Ali eating in front of that sign. <laughs> like I said, they recreated it, but and be chowing down on whatever his aunt was making. Um, but yeah, Lex is really said, you know, for something that's free, for something that's free, you know, if you were ever intrigued by, you know, Muhammad Ali or just a fan of, you know, him, um, just coming out here, um, to see kind of how he trained a very, you know, very modestly for the most part, like I said, modest kind of log cabin style buildings, um, no real glitz glamour, just very, very, um, like I said, very basic surroundings, uh, is really cool, um, to check out. So they got all the eating here, they got some Wheaties boxes, Got Ali on a Gatorade. I mean, his legacy still, you know, his still, uh, it's still felt. Like, you know, you hear the name Muhammad Ali and he's still recognized as the greatest of all time. That's, I believe he said the stove, um, 
like I said, the stove was original. So it's original stove. Um, like I said, some of these have been recreated. Um, but the idea is that she, the, his aunt would sit in the kitchen, prepare the meals here, bring it out to the table full of, I'm sure, hungry, uh, hungry fighters and all the, that were training with Ali all day. So yeah, uh, it's, it's very, very cool. Um, so this kitchen, uh, like I said, it's, uh, like I said, it's not like a, you know, Ali could have got a, um, you know, he could have had a high end kitchen with all this stuff or built this, you know, elaborate gym and elaborate things, but it's, I mean, the gym's very nice. Don't get me wrong. The gym's very nice, but the other like Log cabins, like I said, very modest. It's not something where it's flashy in any way. They have handwritten recipes by his aunt, Lana Shabazz. Muhammad Ali, oh, business card. Author of Cooking for the Champ, Muhammad Ali's Nutritionist. Southern Cornbread, ooh. You know, I'm gonna screen capture this and try to make it myself. <laughs> I'm a big fan of cornbread. Yeah, she made a cookbook, Cooking for the Champ. That's really cool. Oh, he had different newspapers up. <laughs> oh, and there's a bathroom in here, too. A bathroom off the kitchen with a shower, too. Well, that's cool. Muhammad Ali table and chairs. Oh, cool. So this is the original table then. This is the original separate table here. Oh, I didn't get the... Last but not least, this is Ali's cabin. So this was... He went from Miami Beach to this cabin here. And this was his kind of modest you know, living uh, style with a bed, this bed, which is really a picture of him laying on the bed here. Bed where he stayed. He made a boots. It's like a recreation of the boots for hiking. A little oil lamp, just oil lamps him in this mirror said very oil lamps uh table made out of like you can tell like just like cut from like a tree you got a butterfly thing on the fireplace <laughs> i know what you're doing where's the bee though you got the fan mail this was for heat I assume some of this stuff is original as there's like a light on it. Um, pumping water. <laughs> That's how I used to get the water out of there. Wow. Oh, it's Jim Brown interviewing him in the cabin. Oh, that's cool. It's him laying on the bed. Him with Dick Cabot in front of that table. That Dick Cabot thing. That bell rings every morning at 4 30, and every fight in those two bunk houses must be down here dressed by Shine Red Run. It rings again at 8 o'clock for breakfast and 5 o'clock for dinner. 10 o'clock, everybody's in bed. Don't the neighbors get sore? Or the no, chicken? they don't give me no trouble. Most of them hear that bell and they go to church. I want to see the inside of your house. Is this it? Come by, this is an old antique house, a replica of a 200 year old cabin. Did Real design this yourself? Pump, designed everything. Old antique bed in it. Yeah. Coal stove. No electricity, coal lamps, everything is real. I just like in the care. days of Jack Johnson. No, come right in. Just like the days of Jack Johnson. But your face don't stand a chance. Wait a minute, I have to be wiping my feet. No, well, come on in. Hey, I love what you've done with the place. Oh, yeah, this is all antique. I did all this up myself, dig. This is a 200 year old rope bed here. 200 years old? This is old? just about, about 190 years old. Oh, I just had it reinforced. Yeah. And, uh, it's very nice. Everything. So you got the bed's rope. The walls are solid. We uh, tore down an old bridge, of 95 year old bridge, railroad bridge. And how, how do you make it look like real dirt on the walls? Well, this that is real dirt. My friend Harvey Mario, the construction man who built this place, he's going to clean all this off of it. I like it. It's crude. Okay. 
It's the way I like it. I bet, I bet I know what that is. What? Picture of a loved one. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, was right. <laughs> I, All right. And real this, cool. this is an old table over here. How come you have this, a... Uh, this table weighs about 850 pounds. This is made out of a real oak tree. It was 600, really. Right? No, it's about Let's 850 go. pounds. Try to lift it. I suppose this the wood's still heavy. growing. Right there, this is old antique uh, right. pheasant I picked up. Mm. <laughs> this is my real 150-year-old coal on lamp. It's come from a rich man's mansion in Virginia back in 1817-something. Does he know it's missing? No, he don't know it. He's missing it. But, I like uh, it in here. It's really the energy crisis don't bother me. I have coal oil lamps. I got the big old coal stove over here. Yeah. And the water pump right from the well under the ground. Everything's antique. Is it real? Can we look at the That's stove? That's a real coal stove. I'll show you this coal okay, stove. Okay, I'll follow you. Yes, Dick, this is my what old... Did you this wire for electricity? No, this is my old coal stove. I like the idea of getting up in the mornings and making my coal get real naturally. Some you don't get nowadays. Everything's gas yeah. and electric. And during the energy crisis, if things do get too bad, I can always retreat to right here. I got a big two or three tons of coal outside in my timber, and I start making my own fires, and I have a good time. I don't know why I figured you more for lace curtains and lots of shit. No, well, after the fights, after the fights, I go back to my cherry home, and I live in the modern things. But I like this rough thing. Over here, this is my old antique water pump, Dick. This goes 300 feet in the ground. I don't drink all that water you drink in the city. You like to be green really and, and stuff. And this is this is real, no pollution. This comes right out of the ground. Let me let it, nice cold. Take a taste of that. Dude. Well, it looks nice. Seven swimming in it. No, it's just bubble. Oh, it's bubble. Let me get let me get another batch of that. You stay in Central Park, or what? Okay, well, yeah, I'd rather prefer staying there. There's more wrestling. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's that's nice. nice. Don't be funny. Dude. No, that's really nice. So this is my old water well and, and my old dishes and stuff here. And you these got things are hundreds of years old. No electricity. In here. No electricity. How do you watch television? No television. I'll go over to my kitchen to watch television. What do you watch? Uh, I watch the Johnny Carson show. <laughs> They can't show sometimes. <laughs> Clark, who's got the most colored guests on? The most colored? Most colored guests, yeah. Oh, I see. What colors do you prefer? But, uh, <laughs> tonight, if you have me, and now that me and Joe Frazier's on your show, I guarantee you everybody will have Do you think he'll show up? With, you know, I think he'll show up. He told me he's the only one who's got enough guts to call you Cassius. Well, I'm going to straighten him out. After this fight, he will be glad to call me Muhammad Ali. I promise you that Joe okay. Frazier, after this fight, will be glad to call me Muhammad Ali. We'll see about that, and uh, we'll see you uh, right there in New York. I can whoop Joe Frazier, and can you whoop John Carson? Can I have another glass of dirty water? <laughs> we also got some merch here. Keychains and bracelets free, wow. White t-shirt, gray t-shirt, sweatshirts, hoodies, and they got the book. Well, that'll do it. From Fighters Heaven, Deer Lake, Pennsylvania, the camp of the champ, the former camp of Muhammad Ali. Uh, incredible, incredible place to visit and a free museum, no less. The videos that um, they have in each of the locations via touchscreen tie in so well to their various locations, give you kind of context, historical context of like, yeah, he was here, you know, <laughs> he was in these places and, and just all these legacy and, and history. Um, very, very cool. Uh, I decided to grab a shirt. Um, I decided to grab a shirt because all proceeds go to the Michael J. Fox Parkinson Foundation, the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville. Um, they also have wristbands and keychains that they give away for free. So that's really cool. Um, but, you know, should you be here on a weekend, um, it's definitely worth your time to come and check out Deer Lake, Pennsylvania and where Muhammad Ali um, trained here in Pennsylvania. Uh, I can't thank Mick enough for, for opening his doors to me when they were closed um, during their closed during the week. Um, but he was kind enough to open his doors to me to, uh, to check out um, Fighters Heaven uh, and just incredible job of what they did to kind of maintain the upkeep of these buildings and maintain the legacy of Muhammad Ali. Um, really 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 cool but that'll wrap it up fighters heaven deer lake pennsylvania guys 
Thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Like support me on Patreon like John Bailey did. You can do so. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt, hey, Tom, what's your t-shirt? You can do so. It's Fred shirt, as well as links to my eBay store, Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and the Pennsylvania Autograph Collector Association. Links are in the description below. But when it comes to Fighters Heaven, dear like Pennsylvania, I can officially say that my name is Tom and I was here. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe. Bye, everyone.